Hi folks, Mike and Bly here, and we're back with a near dawn. Just the prologue of a near dawn, by the way, but the prologue got away from me last time, and I did, it took a bit longer than I anticipated. So we're back to do it now, finish this prologue off, and um, I guess we have to try and figure out how we get our food. Harry seems to have perked up a little now that we knew our food was on the way. That's what we said last time. Oh, there we go. Succeed in life, you only need two things: ignorance and confidence. I always thought there was something to that. I'm completely loaded with both of those things. How come I'm not successful yet? Okay, so oh, so we don't need to know about the food again yet. What about? Can we talk about the pretty waitress? Can we talk about the pretty girl. What do you think of our waitress? Huh? She pretty. <laughs> I wasn't gonna bring it up. I think she's clumsy, but pretty cute. I might chat her up if I <laughs> were your age or single. <laughs> you saying I've got a chance? Or are you just saying that I should chat her up because I am my own age and I am single? Is that what you're saying, Harry? Is that what you're saying? That's not what I was doing. She <sighs> really just looked familiar to me. Sure, Sam. Whatever you say. Gosh, why does everybody think I have ulterior motives? Can't a guy just be friendly without wanting more than that? Honestly? Seriously? Or do I just come across as the kind of guy that would be that desperate? <laughs> he seemed to be chuckling to himself again. <gasps> Food. Whoa, why is... I was rolling my eyes, I noticed what? our waitress coming back with our orders. She appeared to be having trouble managing and would periodically stagger on her way. Why is the seafood special thing glistening and sparkly and magical? Damn, maybe I should have ordered it. It looks epic. Just extra glitter. My senses may have been heightened from the hunger because I remember this disaster. Oh no. As though I'd watched it in slow motion. Oh, you can spill Harry's seafood crap, but don't drop my burger, man. Patiently licking his lips, the moment his seafood Swiss cheese pasta caught his eye, <sighs> you could see it give off a trail of steam and glitter. To call it fragrant wouldn't do it justice. <laughs> Smell the cheap melted cheese and assorted fruits de mer from ten feet away. Surprisingly, at a glance, it didn't look half bad. It's gonna look pretty bad soon all over Harry's shirt. Grin on Harry's face evaporated into horror as he realized the precariousness of the situation. Rot bro. Perhaps I should offer a helping hand. I had just enough time to think. But that's all you had enough time to do, right? You didn't have time to act. Oh no! Before watching the plate of pasta slip out of the waitress's grasp as she finally managed to regain her balance. All that beautiful. Cheap looking food all over the place. The horror spread to the waitress's face and mine as well. I just want to know who it lands on. Does it land on me or Harry? As if entranced, I braced for impact, seeing the floppy strands untangle and briefly dance through the air with the sticky web of cheese and chunks of fish and shrimp before. Splotch. Oh, well, squelch works too, I suppose. It's just as good a sound effect. Oh, it's Harry. Oh, no. Square on Harry's head. Oh, the poor guy. Oh, God. All I could do was... Laugh. Try and break the tension. Oh, it's an option. It's an option. Stay, yell, laugh, face palm. None of these things really does anybody any favours, to be completely honest. I don't want to yell at the poor lass, she's having a stressful morning. If I laugh, maybe Harry will laugh? Maybe? What would I do in that situation? Probably st No, I've got to laugh, I've got to. Oh god, please, please Harry, don't be pissed off with me. I burst out laughing unconsciously then forcibly silence myself, realizing how inappropriate it is. Oh, come on. Laugh it off. Everyone makes mistakes. I then watch Harry's face turn red with rage as it takes him a moment to process the events of the last few seconds. I suddenly feel incredibly sorry for Ali. The laughter of the kid sitting across from us is the only sound that could be heard in that entire restaurant. His mother promptly scolds him and uh, quiets down. <clears throat> Go back to your mean bob, mean pants, kid. 
my god! I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. The waitress is absolutely mortified. She throws the plate on the table and proceeds to heroically remove handfuls of hot pasta and seafood off of Harry. Yeah. Without thinking, she grabs Harry's water and pours it all over his head to help it cool. <laughs> You're making it worse. She's my soulmate. We're, we're star-crossed clumsy lovers. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. This only seems to exacerbate the problem, angering him even more as he yells various expletives and storms into the bathroom. Well, Ali, I guess you're out of a job. Hey, do you want to come work as a secretary at the law firm down the street? She follows him as far as she dares and can't stop apologizing. Oh boy. Ali, get in here. Oh boy. A gruff voice called from the kitchen. The waitress rushes past me, apologizing for being a klutz, with shame and resignation on her face. I feel bad for her. She seemed nice. Of course, I feel bad for Harry too. <laughs> the guy can't catch a break. I shake my head in disbelief. Miraculously, I somehow remained unscathed in this disaster. Oh, I'm sure Harry hasn't forgotten that I laughed at him. After a minute of muffled arguing and berating, the manager comes out to apologize for what happened and personally wipes down the table. He insists our orders are on the house for the rest of the week. Oh well, if that's what happens in restaurants if you get food spilled on you, I'll be tripping waitresses over all the time now. I give out a sigh. The whole situation has made me very uncomfortable. Harry must still be washing up, when some time later the waitress makes her way towards oh, the entrance. No with her belongings. Jeez, what? That's, that's, that's shocking. I'm sorry I ruined your strategy meeting. I hope your associate is okay. I hope you're okay. Marry me. I mean... Stop! My conscience compels me. I can't. I can't just let you go. She bites her lip and gives me a surprisingly troubled look as I hold the door open for her. Oh. Thank you. She's kind of like a what now face, I guess. Wait, Allie, is it? I see her muscles tighten as she stops in her. Great! Oh! Just what I needed. Do you mean hit? A bunch of lawyers. Good one, Allie. Well done. Uh, well, assault is such a harsh word. I'm sure Harry will drop it eventually. I can only give her a blank stare as she yells at herself. All right, let's hear it. I injured your friend, and now you want to sue me for crimes against humanity, is that it? No! <laughs> Wait a minute! The thought honestly hadn't even occurred to me. Well, it has now though, hasn't it? Because she's put it in your head. Don't tell Harry that. Listen, I'm just... You know, it's the case he can probably win. I needed this job to help put me through school. And now I got fired. Couldn't we just... You know... Write all this off as bad luck? Well, I didn't come out here to... Give you a bollockin. Oh, why would you do that? Again! The lovely fun negative option. No, we're not suing you. No one is suing anybody. Yet. That was just an accident. I'm sure my boss knows that. And once he cools off a little bit, it'll be fine. I mean, literally and figuratively cools off. I came out because I felt bad about what happened. I just wanted to make sure you were doing all right. She breathes a sigh of relief and looks down at her feet. Oh, thank God. Things just seem to be getting worse and worse for me lately. I was worried this was another example of that. Is everybody just having a shit time of it here at the moment? I mean, Harry's law firm's going down the tubes, that poor girl's just lost a job. I certainly hope Fraser's still on the airwaves in Seattle in this timeline because uh, there's lots of customers out there for him. I'm sorry I snapped at you. It's been a hectic day for me. As you can guess. Never mind guess. I was there. I saw it firsthand. I don't need to be psychic in this situation. For the first time, she looks at me not as the enemy. She even tries to smile, I think. One of those awkward kind of... It's one of those kind of grimace smiles. Talk, look, why do I want to stare at her again? Speaking with Allie. 
Okay. She's calmed down somewhat since I put her fears to rest. Still, she seems pretty anxious. So would I be if I just lost my job? Talk. Uh, about herself. Can you tell Again. me about yourself? <laughs> so anyway, now that you're fired and you're not busy working, let's hear your life story. Why do you want to know? Why not, I guess. Ain't got nothing else to do. I have to wait for my boss to get cleaned up and you... Uh, your calendar just got a lot clearer. I didn't have an answer. My name's Allie, Alexa. I'm from out east. Moved here with my aunt when I was four years old. I'm a university student. Her answer was quick and decisive. Yeah, she always wants to go and, you know, look at the job ads. Her aunt, the diner, her school, her aunt. You were living with your aunt? Yeah, except I don't know where she is. She disappeared three days ago without a word. Didn't leave a note or anything. That's not like her. Wait a minute. Your aunt missing? Have you been to the police? Are you just... I, 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 what the... Why? I mean, that would explain why she was maybe a little bit flustered and fumbling around at the restaurant. Which makes me feel even worse. Oh. I'm really worried. That's awful. I'm sorry to hear that. Did you file a missing persons report? Of course. Oh. Oh, well, yeah, well, I guess, you know. She That's distressed. not great either. I'm not surprised she was so distracted at work. I didn't really know what to say. The diner? I'm sorry about what happened at the restaurant back there. Probably not as sorry as your boss. <laughs> Don't leave me laugh about it. I guess she can get another waitress and job. <sighs> Too soon? Nah, it's fine. We always love a giggle about it. I meant that the owner. He didn't have to chew you out like that. Well, you had to make an example, didn't he, I suppose. It's no excuse. Firing someone like that. He's a dick. <laughs> okay. Favor, really. At least we know that now. Fine. That's clarified. Anyway. If it's any consolation, I probably won't go back there again. She sways from side to side indifferently. School? So you're a university student? Yep. What are you studying? Art. Third year. She didn't seem to want to linger. Maybe she was concerned I might change my mind about suing her. Paranoid type, huh? Alright. Oh, and talk about her art. You're an artist, huh? She blinks at me, making no attempt I guess she response. wants to leave now. What kind of art do you do? Who's your favorite artist? You know Jackson Pollock? Oh, I know that guy. Art. I'm sorry. I do. Like that. Lots of emotions in those paintings. That's how. Okay, I'll give it that much. Lots of emotion. Pollock. I nod thoughtfully. Pollock, yes. Rise with Pollock. Pretty much as far as I'll go with Jackson. Pollock is terrible. Rah, 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 rah. Pollock is terrible, and therefore, by proxy, your art is terrible too. I love Pollock. The splotchiness and subjectivity. Splotchiness. Actually, one of my favorites. <laughs> splotchiness. Coming from art expert Sam over here. Of course he would be. I thought I sensed mocking sarcasm. Maybe I should have just been honest and said I thought he was terrible. Is that evident? I guess that's evident. You may go. I really hope your aunt turns up soon. Just. Believe me, things can only get better from here. It's only when you've hit rock bottom that you can make your way back up again. And many other bullshit motivational poster style phrases. Yeah, there's hoping. If you ever find yourself in legal troubles... Don't try and sell your goddamn business to her right now. Do you really think she's got enough money to afford legal aid right now? I withdrew a business card from my inner jacket pocket. Oh, is that your terrible way of giving her your number? She accepted it and nodded. Son, that is cringy. Thanks. Cringy. The both of us better luck. As I watched her leave down the street, I switched Harry's order to a burger and took our lunches to go. After all, I decided I'd wait for him outside. <laughs> Things had gotten about as awkward as I could stand in there. Oh man. Not quite the Pacific. It was Puget Sound, <sighs> Coastal Bay. 
You could usually see a network of ferries transporting people to and from the many islands across the sound. We're gonna get some more we're gonna get some geography lessons now. We had our fifties lesson in the diner. Now we're gonna get some Seattle geography lessons. It was one of the federal buildings down the street. They do have a federal courthouse inside. I might visit it one day. Whatever floats you got. A titan of industry towered over me. One of the largest buildings in Seattle. Yeah. The WF Center boasts nearly 50 stories of commercial office space. Are you advertising them? Did they pay you to say that? <laughs> it was a really nice day. Well, that I can see for myself. Seattle has a reputation for being grey and dreary. <laughs> yeah, it does. You may even hear it's the cloudiest major city in the United States. Around this time of year, though, it's beautiful. I want to duck back to Frasier for a second. They said having a reputation being grey, dreary and rainy. There's so many episodes of Frasier where it's raining or windy and I always thought to myself, if I ever moved to the US, I probably want to live in Seattle because it sounds the most like home to me. It's a nice art deco piece of work from the 20s or 30s. It was probably a really big deal back in its day. Oh, you think stuff from 20s and the 30s is historical? You are so cute. <laughs> it's the Seattle Tulip. It must be one of the most ironic installations in the city. <laughs> Three tons of steel shaped into a decorative flower, painted bright red and green, and dropped in the middle of a monotonous concrete jungle. You gotta have some colors somewhere though, alright? <laughs> we talk about the greenery. It's nice they make an effort to keep the place more green. This area would be really depressing without some of these trees around. It's one of the things with cities, it's why I've never been much of a city person. When it, begets, when it starts getting a bit too much like a concrete jungle, I, I can't, I can't deal with it. I can't deal with it. I need countryside, man. Uh, wait, why do we get uh, newspapers? The daily paper was hanging in the window. There was a headline about increased sunspot activity. Sunspot activity. It to explain why we should all be concerned on page fourteen. Sunspot activity that affects like the magnetic sh stuff, huh? Is that going to play into the story somehow? I'm just wondering if this is going to end up being kind of a supernaturalist story or not. I mean, judging by that nightmare I had at the start, then I'm guessing maybe. Just look at the shitty little diner that we're never going back in again. The scene of the crime. <laughs> Sal's diner has been around since the 80s. It's one of our usual spots for lunch, though I may have to rethink that now. You better rethink it. Check on Harry. Uh... Oh. I think I'd rather wait out here. I'm just letting him simmer off. Simmer off? Simmer down. Sorry, simmer down, yes. Harry finally came out of the bathroom. Great. And rushed to meet me outside. Understandably, he could not get away from there soon enough. Still a little bit splotchy. Pretty good job of cleaning himself off. <laughs> pretty good job. The stuff was never coming out of that shirt, though. Dry cleaners. It's a nice enough day, Harry. You can walk around shirtless. It's fine. <laughs> You're totally allowed to do that. Yeah, thanks a lot for laughing at that. A whole pile of good you are. Sam. I couldn't help it, man. You had like muscles and freaking shrimp on your head. <laughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> professionalism. I'm sorry about that, Harry. I couldn't help it. It was just really the last thing I expected to happen. Though, given how clumsy she was. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. You were thinking with your other brain. <laughs> I'll be thinking down there for dancing, my friend. Man, what a day. Let's just go back to the office and never speak to this again. Can you do me this one favor? I... For now. But I may bring it up at office parties in the future. Or maybe at your retirement party. Or something like that. Alright, it's just I'm just making a mental note at the back of my head to not actually forget about what it happened. Speak of what? That's ah, the bad boy. Don't be afraid of heights. That is not what kills you. Whoa, wait a minute, what? What? Did you just say, Harry? I said let's go back to the office. That's not what you said at all. Seafood F and pasta. I feel nauseous just thinking about it. <laughs> you got a real up close and personal view of it. I guess you're kind of glad you didn't eat it now. He kept shaking his head the whole way as we walked back to the office. 
Okay, 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 guys. What hmm. would happen if we don't forgive Annie quite so easily? Well, then we'd be a dick, wouldn't we? Adios, mis amigos. It's been a pleasure. All right, okay, there we go. That's the end of that little prologue. All right, that was fun. Uh, like I say, that prologue was basically just conversational options. But it did say it was like a visual novel slash point and click. But I would like to see a bit more of the point and click aspect come into it after you get through the prologue because I like it. I like me a little bit of item mixing and matching too, you know, rather than just listening to people being silly. But I can listen to people be silly all day too. So, you know, it, it works either way. But this was great. I want to keep an eye on the uh, how things are going with these guys and. As I did in the first part, I'll pop a link in the description so you can go through and maybe be a complete ass all the way through and maybe my little alter ego will appreciate that. This has been a Neo Dawn, I've been Mikey Bly. I hope you've enjoyed this and also hope you have yourselves a fantastic morning, afternoon, evening, or night. I'll see you all next time around. Bye for now. <laughs>